Those are my jumping on Amanda Scarborough, though, and, and I just remember because this was in the very beginning of my television career. So actually being able to watch a game and then try to tell viewers like what we're seeing on the field. And I remember the combination of Amanda Scarborough and Megan Gibson was absolutely must watch television. And the reason was, is I wanted every young girl to see how you could go from the mound to the batter's box and be able to be so successful in both. And Amanda Scarborough, like watching her, it was unbelievable, especially your freshman year to come in, the numbers you did day one, you were the, what, rookie of the year and the player of the year within the conference. Like, I mean, that just doesn't happen right away. And I, I just remember when I was doing those early games, thinking and wanting so many young girls, and now, of course, you are influencing so many young girls, but I, it started your freshman year of seeing how poised and able to do both sides of the ball. And it was, it was so, so cool for me because it was the first time I was on television trying to like explain to people. And then I just was like, just watch, watch Amanda and watch Megan Gibson because that is an athlete. Yeah. And Jeff, you know, I want to follow up on that real quick too, because I remember when Amanda was a freshman and she was roping the ball, she was playing first base as well as hitting and pitching. And um, when I was digging deeper into her numbers, a 405 batting average as a freshman, 11 home runs, she was 26 and two in the circle, just 182 innings pitched, a sub one ERA. I mean, she was unbelievable. And I remember, cause I was still playing professionally in Japan and, and uh, coming back to call the Women's College World Series as well. And I was like, man, these guys, this, this kid is a stud. I cannot wait to watch her through her career and you know, stellar career and, and, and going into that senior season with Megan Gibson, where I just thought that, you know, it's like now she's the prototypical teammate where she was out there supporting her teammate, trying to help her, even though she was injured. And so, Amanda, I think that's why um, I think we're all, we're all like wowed by your, your career and what you Amanda did. Amanda Scarborough, this is your life. <laughs> I'm gonna add, can I add a little bit more love for my friend? All right, let's, let's, go, let's go to Jen Schroeder first, and then I think her second grade teacher is on the line. Let, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> when I think people think of Texas A&M, they think SEC softball, which Amanda did not play in the SEC. She played in the Big 12, and her freshman year was against Kat Osterman. So you're talking rivalry. We're not talking, you know, SEC early 2000s when they weren't good. We're talking competitive Big 12 softball when she walked in and put up those numbers. So I think that also shows just how dominant she was at a young age against someone who's known as one of the best in the whole world. That's the category Amanda Scarborough's in. Thank you guys. I'll not be writing a check. I'll wire you guys each so much. <laughs> Venmo, social distancing, you know. Uh, but thanks. I, I truly was honored to be in the bracket, to just be completely honest. Um, but here's the one last thing, Beth, and we can move on. But the competitive side of me, which is so bad that I could have seen what would have happened my senior year because maybe we win the national championship if I'm not hurt. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't we don't even make the postseason. You never know. It could go really well or it could go really bad. But the competitive side of me just wishes so badly I could have finished that year and just seeing what could have happened with, with our team.